Hey everybody, welcome back. Another great day because today is the day that you're going to learn just what I needed by the cars, just like you hear it on the record. We're going to talk about the rhythm parts and focus mainly on that great guitar solo, which is a masterpiece as far as I'm concerned in terms of pop solo guitar by the great Elliot Easton. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, please jump down and click subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell. It'll let you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Also, all my videos have jump links in the bottom in the description and on the bar. And you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see if you want to bypass some of my yapping. Also, if you're looking for ways to support the channel, I really appreciate that. There's super thanks, which is right, like, right in the below there. And it's just like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or I also have a Patreon page, which has exclusive content um, on there and special things, including chord charts and tabs for all the songs that I do YouTube videos on. That's where you'll find them there. And you know what? If you're like me, I mean, I like guitars. You like guitars. I mean, we like guitars. And if you're like me, you like wearing stuff that has to do with guitars. And so I started making some stuff like that. Um, here's one. More guitars, please. You can find shirts and other items for guys and gals down at the link in the description below. You'll see my shop there. Check it out. If you like it, buy some. Wear it loud and proud. Okay, the car is just what I needed. This was off of their debut album in 78, I believe. And um, man, it's just such a great example of a super hard rocking three-ish minute pop song and it's just hooky all over the place. Okay, in terms of tone, um, I don't know what he used on the record. I have no idea. He was playing Les Pauls a lot on the early video footage, even in a red one like this one. <laughs> um, and um, so I would just say, you know, try and get a Les Paul through Marshall, <laughs> you know, sort of tone. Just good, hard crunch, not death distortion. You don't want the bumblebee buzz distortion. You just want good, hard crunch on that. Um, I'm using a stacked um, overdrives with my OCD into my blues driver, and I'll have links to those when I'm using uh, in the description below. But um, I see him playing the song a lot on, this, on the Les Paul with the dual pickup setting. So... So I'm going with that. And for those who are interested in gear, by the way, I'm using my Fender um, Deluxe Reverb Tone Master, the blonde one, for everything that you're hearing here. So if you like the sound, um, it's just the mic combined with the USB on that feature, which is really nice, combining those things together on the recording and um, gets a great tone, I think. All right, so I'll talk about the rhythm guitar first. Um, so the car's overall sound, as you know, it's sort of harder edge, Definitely some, some overdrive and distortion going on here. Um, um, and uh, so the rhythm guitar is played by Rick Okasik. And it is Okasik, not Okasik, by the way. Fight me in the comments if you want. Um, but the rhythm verse sections um, basically go like this. It starts. There are two parts to it. Um, they're identical except for the last chord in each part, okay? So it starts with an E, to a B, to a C sharp, and then the last part on the first half is a G sharp. And it repeats those same chords again, down to an A this time. So it resolves nicely. You know, the first time there's a little bit of the tension with that G sharp. Um, and then it gets back to sort of happy major land by landing on the A. All right. So the way you see Rick Okasik play it is that very first kickoff of the song. You know, he's actually playing it up here. It's like he's doing everything on the, on the sixth string bar chord. Right, and runs through that. And then he just... And then he runs through the rhythm. And then when you watch him on the video, he doesn't go all the way back up here. From here on, he's using this E. A. Right? It 
repeats those parts during the next verse. Um, it gets a little heavier with the other guitar that Elliot um, adds on to that, so he may pick it a little harder. But you'll notice a lot of car, a lot of car songs, the rhythm guitar that Rick's doing. It's he's really doing a lot of just the basic backbone chunk, and it's great. It keeps it very simple. It's all power chordy, root fifth, root stuff. And it allows space for everything else to happen. Bass, Elliot's guitar, um, and the great you know keyboard and everything else that's happening. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. So on the chorus, we're using the same chords. We're just changing the order a little bit. So, and the, you know, the stabs are in different places, right? Or you can play your C sharp minor here. Like that, right? That's pretty much it on the rhythm. Like it's just repeating those sort of phrases. I think the only part that's different is what happens on the outro, you know, when the keyboard is doing the. You know, that part, right? So. Here's the just ends on the C sharp minor. That's pretty much all there is to it on the rhythm guitar section. Okay, now for the lead guitar, this is Elliot Easton, and I am a big fan. That guy has some of the hookiest guitar parts ever, and he's left handed. It just makes it look cool when you watch the band play. Cool guy, you know? And he's willing to share details about his parts and his approach to guitar. Okay, so let's talk about what Elliot does um, as we're going through his parts in the song, right? So during the verse parts, um, you have Rick holding down the... Right? So the next time around, um, he go, you know, goes through one sort of verse section there, or maybe two verse sections there. And um, so then Elliot comes in and he just sort of adds on top sort of lightly. It's just another sort of little bit of power on top of it. And he does the sort of, you know, the, the rock and roll. He's adding some of that to it. So on the, when Rick is playing just the straight E, he's adding this. And when you get to the C sharp minor, um, I can't really tell listening to it if he's actually doing, you know, because you're not doing, it's not a major. Maybe he's doing that or maybe he's just doing, either way it'll sound good. And then back, and he's building, <clears throat> and then he really opens it up. Big E, you know. He does that, E, A, you know, back to E, up to a B, uh, up to a B bar chord. So he's doing the same thing that he did on the E. And sometimes he grabs that, he goes all the way across, I think you can hear that high E every once in a while. on like that right um, he closes out his little section there when it goes to the um, uh, G sharp you know and then ending on the a right the first time when it goes to the G sharp he does that little lick which is just right so that falls in context Mess that one up, right? And then it goes around again. And it ends on A and it does the same thing. 
right? I think he goes up. I think he climbs into it. Right? So that's those little embellishments there. So now on the chorus, you know, Rick again is doing the... I guess you... Right? Elliot plays something super interesting. It's kind of hard to hear on the record. Um, you can feel it. You can kind of hear parts of what's going on. Uh, but if you watch the rock and roll induction ceremony where they play this song, you can plainly see what he's doing. Um, and it goes like this. So there's, there's sort of two-ish parts to the chorus, what he's doing. So he's playing. And then... And then he closes it with... Or... It's hard to tell which one. On the record, I think he hits both. I think you can kind of hear both those notes together. Um, but really interesting. So, um, so that part slowly. Pause. So where, where that comes in is right when it moves from the E and the, the, uh, where you hit the B chord right in the chorus. Go. Right? So it's... That sort of timing. Right? So slow down one more time. Last time. Or. You can hear the single note sometimes. And then we're going to go into the guitar solo. Now, when Elliot talks about his theory on how he likes to solo, it's really interesting. He actually really does follow the chords. Like he's talked about, you know. A lot of times in rock, um, the key, uh, the song might be in the key of whatever, A or whatever. And whoever's soloing will just sort of solo endlessly in A as the chords move around. Maybe it's a 1-4-5 progression, you know, he's still sort of soloing in the key of A when the chords all move to D, which still works in blues rock, right? But he's apparently very mindful of the chord movement. Um, and he does move his positions and his parts to match the chord that's being played at that moment. And when he said that, I started paying attention to a lot of these solos, and that, that is, that's exactly what's happening. Um, and this song is no different, you know. Um, so let's, let's run through that. Um, so he is going to launch into the solo after that part we just learned. Or. All right. So the first chord it, that's coming up is an E. Right? So um, most of everything you're going to do, by the way, is right in this position. You're really not going to move a whole lot from right here throughout the whole thing until you get to the very end. Okay, so he launches into that E um, with this, right, which we've heard a lot. It's major, major, uh, major scale E. The next chord is B. So he comes down to now we're going to do the bend over the major chord B. Right? B. And it's moving to the G sharp. Which is right there. Right there. So E. B. C sharp. 
same thing, works over the C sharp. Landing on the G sharp, or yeah, G sharp. Just great, right? Now the next chord, back to E. Which is part of this E chord. Back in the next chord is D or B. And then he does this figure that climbs up to the B. It's in the B scales. Right? So all together so far. And then the next chord is G sh uh, C sharp to A. So here's C sharp. And here's A. That's why that works, right? Now we're going to come back to our, you know, E. So that all works. B. Here's part of the B chord. Now we're on our. We're gonna do our C. Sh C sharp minor to G sharp again. And you're gonna do this bend. Right. So that's a C sharp. Just like you're building off of that. Now we're going to go into quasi country, country rock land. Um, and I like to, up to now, I've been doing everything with a pick. For this part, I like to sort of do a hybrid. I switch to fingers, so I'll stick my pick back in my finger here and. You're going to do this bend, except you'll do it in tune, right? So you'll, <clears throat> you're bending up on the B string at seven, up two frets, and you're doing your stretch with your pinky. So the lick, just the notes are, that's what you're trying to get to, but you're doing it with a bend, a sort of quasi pedal steel sort of it. Lay your ring finger back. And then you're going to go to your climb, which is going to take you out of the solo. Everything now is going to be on the third string and the first string. And you're going to start that at the ninth fret which is part of an A chord. I'm going to go up two frets, which is like a B. Then you're going to slide up to this shape, which is like part of the E chord. And then up to this part. And it's chromatic from here. And the timing, I don't know how to describe the timing. If you know the song, you sort of know when it changes. It sort of accelerates after you get to the E. There you go. So one time all the way through, I'll do it slowly, okay? That's how you do that. I just love that. That's so cool. You know what? Just for fun, let me see if I can play this left-handed, okay? Hold on. Okay, let's try it. 
Okay, from there, it's more of the same. It goes around, I think, on the chorus, you know, so he does more of the... And one thing I want to say about that is um, there's a couple places that you can play this. And um, I think for the most part, from what I can tell, he is sort of living on the third, second, and first strings for, for this riff. I sort of like to slide up, though, to play it higher. Same notes, maybe a little bit different um, uh, sonically with the with the strings, because um, you're sort of moving backward a string a little bit. Um, but it sets you up really nice for when you come out it come out of it, because you're because then you're already right there. If you're doing it this way, you sort of have to jump up to, to get that. Which you could do, right? Um, uh, but just trying to give you ideas on how you can make it easier for yourself. that so pick your poison on a, on on which way you want to do that but I just wanted to give an option there and during that repetitive chorus there he's he links those together so they run through that whole system twice and he does this and again and then they run through it again um, all the way through Okay, well that's pretty much it for guitars. So, did you learn something new today? I hope you did. Um, hey, if you haven't done so already and you like what you see, jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. It lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this lesson. And if there's another song that you want me to do a similar lesson on, let me know that in the comments too. And hey, check out the store, there's guitar stuff. So. Have fun with that. All right, until next week, take care, everybody.